Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is Force with our Magic the Gathering Booster Pack opening special video extravaganza. What am I talking about? Well, if you missed it the other day in the Sunday Tea episode, I basically mentioned that I got sent a bunch of cards from Wizards of the Coast. I don't know why. They didn't send me an email ahead of time. They, there was no note in the box with the cards, but it was shipped from Wizards of the Coast. It came to me, and here it is. There's a, I've got this Fate Reforged booster nine pack booster kit and then a few different starter kits that they send normally that's something you wouldn't buy unless you were actually like a beginner and had no idea how to play magic but i figured what we would do is i could do a box opening so that's what we're going to do here in this video i'm just going to go through this it's been so long since i've opened up uh booster packs of magic gathering literally the last time i did it i was sitting on the floor just like we are here when i was a kid and i used to buy like a box of magic cards i would sit on the carpet in my living room and I would just open each pack and I'd spread them all out and I'd check them out and I'd put them in like their respective piles and everything. So I just thought if we're gonna actually do this, we should do it as authentic as possible. And that's, this is how I open magic cards. So let's go ahead and get this started. Um, I guess I should start off with these, uh, these starter kits just be because, you know, we should open these things. So here it is, Fate Reforged. Uh, this is a green intro pack. I'll put this camera down here. Yeah, we've got two cameras going on here. I'm super professional, huh? <laughs> All right, so let's let's get, how do I, should I open this? Should I open it from the top or the bottom? Let's open it from the top here. I'm trying to get this. Oh, this is a horrible job. I'm like butchering this thing. Although I suppose I don't really need this packaging again in the future, huh? All right, so, ooh, what's this back here? Oh, they come with booster packs too? I got so many booster packs to open up. So that's a starter deck and it looks like we got a couple of booster packs open up as well. But I don't know what this is. This is the rules reference card. If you ever, <laughs> so many times, I'd be playing in, like in a, in, a in a local tournament or whatever. And they'd be like, I, see, I don't know if you can do that. Let's double check the rules. And then we call over our host. His name was Hammer. He was, uh, his, his first name was Sean. I forget what his last name was, but he used to be on the MTG Pro Tour. And he opened up a magic store right by where I lived as a kid. So we'd call over Hammer. He'd be like, Hammer, I'm not sure about this rule. Could you please, uh, could you please check the rule book? And so he, 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 I mean, he knew all the rules, so he didn't have to check the rule book. But sometimes you'd have a little reference card so you could check all the different rules. What rules are there? Actually, it was a lot bigger than this thing. It was like a thick rule book. But what is this here? Fate Reforged. Is this like a poster thing? This is interesting. Let's go up to the big camera here. Oh, yeah. Stuff to hang on the wall. Absolutely. I know this card art, don't I? I feel like I've seen this before. Is this not a thing that I've already seen before? It, it, it looks like a thing I've already seen before. Maybe not. I don't know. I could be completely off base here, but yeah, stuff to hang up. And then like a, uh, a list of, I guess these are the different starter decks. There's five of them. They only sent me four. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, okay, so that's that. All right, so let's open up. Let's open up. Let's start off with the uh, starter deck here. Okay, so we've got our little, this is a, I, this is a snowboard tool. I used to snowboard. I, I haven't done it in a long time now, but it's got all sorts of fun stuff. And even though I don't snowboard anymore, I still use it on occasion. And it's good for opening up packs, apparently. Just a little sharp blade there, which I think was for cutting straps or whatever in case you get tied up or what. I don't know. I don't remember what it's for. I don't snowboard anymore. Tenmer War Shaman. When Tenmer War Shaman enters the battlefield, manifest the top card of your library. Put that card onto the battlefield face down as a 2-2 creature, then turn it face up at any time uh, for its mana cost if it's a creature card. I get to, uh, when he comes into play, I get to put a creature, a top card in my library, I put it down as a 2-2 creature, and then it can be flipped over or whatever, so that's pretty interesting. You know what, maybe I'll do this instead. I don't know if I want to do it like this. Maybe we'll do this so I can read it better, you know? Thousand Winds, flying, 5-6 with Morph, may cast this card face down as a 2-2 creature, and then um, for 3, and then I can turn it face up. When Thousand Winds is turned face up, return all tapped creatures to their owner's hands. So that'd be really good after someone attacked you or whatever, and their creatures were tapped out, you could do that and then return those cards uh, to the owner's hand. Uh, and then we've got just a bunch of commons. I don't think I want to go through. There's so many, there's so many damn cards here to go through. I think I'll only really read off of the rares and stuff for you guys, but we can just quickly then some additional cards. All right, so it looks like it's going to be two rares for a starter pack. So let's go ahead and check out, uh, let's check out the next starter pack and the next starter pack here. This is the red one. Hello. <laughs> 
<laughs> switching cameras there. All right, so let's open up this one. All right, so we got a couple of a uh, couple more booster packs in there, just like that. Uh, two more little things. I wonder if this is a different poster. I will actually be interested if that is. If I get like a bunch of different posters here. Now that, that looks like the same damn thing. It is the same damn thing. Thanks a lot, wizards. <laughs> Let's take a look at this here. Ooh. All right, so here is the foil uh, foil rare card that we have. This is the Flame Rush Rider. It's a 3-3 for 5. Whenever Flame Rush Rider attacks, put a token onto the battlefield tapped and attacking that's a copy of target attacking creature. Exile that token to event a turn. So that's really good. So if you're attacking with multiple creatures and Flame Rush Rider is also attacking, you get to pick one of your attacking creatures and copy it, which is pretty cool. And that's got dash. I've never heard of dash. I may cast this spell for its dash cost. If I do, it gains haste and it's returned to the battlefield uh, return from the battlefield to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. Wow, so you can basically temporarily put this in play. Can that be done as an instant, or is it just a sorcery? I'm assuming it's just a sorcery, you do it during your turn, so if you don't want your opponent to destroy it on their turn or something like that, maybe, I'm not positive though. Deflecting Palm, so it's a red and a white, it's an instant. The next time a source of your choice would deal damage to you this turn, prevent that damage. If damage is prevented this way, Deflecting Palm deals that much damage to that source's controller. So you wanna firewall me in the face for 15? No thank you, Deflecting Palm, back to your face. Congratulations, I hope you like it. Okay, so here's the next pack. Uh, looks like it's a black deck, at least. Black and then something else. And you try to make sure we don't get the reflection of the lights. Okay, let's open this. I suck at opening these things. They're so horrible to it. I'll put all these boxes over here. Okay, so, do, 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 do. Couple booster packs, some more of this stuff here. Mm hmm. Put these over here. And is this, yeah, it is the same damn picture. You know, Wizards, you really could have mixed it up. I swear to God, you got so much amazing card art, but you use the same damn picture and freaking thing over and over again. What are you doing? I might accidentally call them Blizzard because that's, <laughs> they're two companies that like I, I've been following for so long and they sound so damn similar. Wizards and Blizzard. Why don't they work together and make the best game ever? Probably not gonna happen. Uh, all right, here we go. Uh, black and green is this deck. Just take a quick sort of perusal. You guys can see these here in the back at least. I would seriously, this video would be like an hour long if I didn't, um, if I if I went through every single card. So we can't do that, not gonna happen, not gonna happen. Let's see what this does. Flying, five, four for five. At the beginning of each opponent's end step, that player chooses up to two creatures he or she controls, then sacrifices the rest. So this would be good, this would be good if you're playing like a, a, a deck that goes wide, or that basically floods the board with a lot of stuff. This will be strong against that because I have to sacrifice everything but two of those creatures. Next one is the green one. Hornet Queen, I know Hornet Queen. Uh, so this is seven for two, two flying. It has death touch. So whenever it deals damage to another creature, it will kill that creature. And then uh, when Horde Queen enters the battlefield, put four one one green insect creature tokens with flying and death touch onto the battlefield. So yeah, I know all about Horde Queen. That's an M15 card. That's not a Fate Reforged card. So that's why that's why I know it. All right, last starter pack here, and then we'll be just going into the boosters. At which point we'll take a look at the rare from each booster and then go on. So this is the Unflinching Assault deck. This is going to be black and white. Ooh, that's a nice color combination. I like that color combination. Got removal, you got a uh, possible life gain, you got some really good cool things like graveyard fetch or whatever, or at least you have the possibility of that. Our deck, let's check out the deck now. Too much cardboard sitting around here now. Shitting around here, shitting around here. Uh, put aside the rares. And then we'll do a quick perusal through the deck for you to maybe see briefly if you guys just want to get a look at, I don't know, I don't, I don't know, you, you can't read any of the, anything probably. I don't know how high def this damn camera is going to be, this little handheld piece of garbage. You know, I bought that. I bought this handheld thing for like 400 bucks thinking, yeah, this is it. I said, oh, I'm going to need to record high quality, high quality videos. It turns out, no, you need like a... $1,500 to $2,000 camera like the one that's right here. It's just, just ridiculous, man, to get good looking video. Here are our cards. We have got the Dragon Scale General, four lands for a 2-3. Uh, at the beginning of your end step, Bolster X, where X is the number of tapped creatures you control. So Bolster 
I get to choose a creature with the least toughness among the creatures that I control and put X11 one, one, plus one plus one counters on it. So that's permanent. So basically, however many tapped creatures that I have um, at the beginning of my end step, I get to take the creature with the least toughness and give him that many plus one plus one counters as a permanent upgrade. That's not like for the turn or something. That's crazy. Wow. Cruel Sadist. It is one black for a 1-1. One, one. I can pay tap, pay one life, pay one black, and tap it, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Cruel Sadist. So I can just put a counter on it. Or I can uh, tap to a black, tap it, remove X 1-1 one, one counters from Cruel Sadist, and then Cruel Sadist deals X damage to target creature. So basically, this is something that you will build up over time, every single turn, and then once there's a creature you want to remove, you'll dump those counters and 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 ping off that creature. And, and you get to choose however many counters, too. It's not just all of the counters on the creature. You get to pick it, so that's pretty neat, too. Okay, so that does it for the uh, intro packs. Now it's time to open up some boosters. So we've got a bunch of boosters here from the intro pack that we can go ahead and and pop open and take a look at. And I believe the rare is in the back. Oh, there's a token. I got a flying spirit token there. And we also got a, uh, a tap land. And here we go. That is, uh, wait a second, are those two rares? What the hell? I got two rares. Is that, I didn't know that was a thing. All right, so first we have Mob Rule. It is six uh, sorcery. Choose one. So tap six, cast it. I get to pick one of these two things. Gain control of all creatures with power four or greater until end of turn. Untap those creatures, they gain haste. Or gain control of all creatures with power three or less until end of turn. Untap those creatures, they gain haste. And then we have uh, Crux of Fate. Another choose one card. It is a five. It's a black card. I get to either destroy all dragon creatures or destroy all non-dragon creatures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll go with that one. All right, next pack here. That's some cool art. Now that's what uh, I've always loved about Magic is the uh, the art, card art is amazing. Shaman, Shaman, Shamanic Revelation. For five, it's a sorcery. We get to draw a card for each creature you control and it has Ferocious. You gain four life for each creature you control with power four or greater. Okay, check out this one. And going to the back, Atarka World Render. It is seven for a six four with flying and trample. And whenever a dragon you control attacks, it gains double strike until end of turn. So if you're swinging with a lot of dragons, uh, someone is going to get severely hurt there. <laughs> I think I'll keep the camera down here now. It's just a little bit easier than swapping it every single time. I draw Mocha the Eternal. It's a 5-5 five, five for 5, already liking it. Whenever a dragon you control attacks, bolster 2. I, I, that's, that sounds good. I didn't even realize this. I guess uh, the Fate Reforged here is all about dragons. We got lots of dragons. Look at this. Wooded Foothills. Pay 1 life, sacrifice it, search for a mountain or forest. So this is a, a, a pain fetch land. Nice. Very nice. Holy moly. Alicia who smiles at death. First strike, whenever Alicia who smiles at death attacks, you may pay two, either a white or a black. Uh, if you do, return to our creature card with power two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield, tapped and attacking. Of course, of course. Yes, yes, yes. Alrighty, here we go. This is so exciting. I can't believe I have magic cards again. Wizards, what are you doing? Yeah, this is this is their plan. They're suckering me in, so I spend like a hundred bucks on a booster box now, like an idiot. Torrent Elemental. It costs five for a three five flying. When Torn Elemental attacks, tap all creatures defending player controls, and I can tap five with a black or green to put Torn Elemental, Elemental from exile onto the battlefield tapped. Activate this. Wait, what? Oh, wait, are you serious? This can't be right. So that basically bypa it bypasses exile. It bypasses exile. Wow. Okay. I didn't know that was a thing. I didn't even know that was a possibility. Dag Hatar the Adamant. So yeah, it enters the, it's a four lands, enters with four 1-1 one, one counters, and I can move 1-1 one, one counters from one creature to another when it's in play. Our rare is Frontier Siege. As Frontier Siege, ent Siege enters the battlefield, choose cons or dragons. If you choose cons at the beginning of each of your main phases, add two green mana to your mana pool. If you choose dragons, whenever a creature with flying enters the battlefield under your control, you may have it fight with another target creature you don't control. That, that does sound pretty good. That's a two-mana accelerant right there. Okay, so time to open up this thing, the fat pack. All right, so there's nine booster packs in here. I don't know if it comes with something else as well. I think it comes like in like a special box or whatever. This is, ooh, it looks like it's like a fancy card holder box, which is perfect for me because I just got a bunch of new cards and I need some place to store these damn things. So there's a fat pack 
box thingy. Keep that back here. We can even prop it up with some cardboard. Look at this. It's all professional. Put it right here. There you go. It's propped up. Now it shouldn't fall over, hopefully. Okay, so there's that. Fate Reforged Player's Guide. So there's just a little guide here, it looks like. And what is this? What is going to happen here? Aha. So yeah, it looks like this is just going to be I can store... Oh, wait a second. What the hell? What is this? Is a bunch of lands and some dye? Oh, this is sick. So here is our 20-sided die for all of your Magic the Gathering life tallying needs. And then we have got, uh, here's five of the nine boosters. And then this other one, I don't, are, are these just lands? Or is this like another deck or something in here? I would actually be happy if it's just like a bunch of lands, because that would be great. I could use those. Oh, yeah. Look at that. So I'm all set now for basic lands. It's funny because I actually need this, like, since I don't have physical cards anymore. All right, so we're going to go through. We're just going to grab all the rares. Let's put our 20-sided die. We're going to put it up at 20, starting at full life. Monastery Siege. This is cost three. It's an enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, choose cons or dragons. So a repeating theme here. Cons, the beginning of your draw step, draw an additional card, then discard a card. And then for dragons, spells your opponent control cast uh, that target you or a permanent you control cost two more to cast. Very nice. A little inhibiting effect there. Making it harder for them to hit you. Or take longer, at least. They need to get more stuff in play. We got a foil uh, fetch land here. Outpost Siege. Did we already see this? Yeah, I think we did. Four lands. Enchantment. Choose cons or dragons. Then we can get upkeep. Uh, exile the top card of your library until uh, end of turn. You may play that card. Oh, we haven't seen this yet. So you can play that card. And then dragons. Whenever a creature you control enters the battlefield, Outpost Siege deals one damage to our creature or player. Now, that doesn't seem quite as good as some of the other enchantment uh, variations of that thing that we've seen. I don't know, it just doesn't seem quite as strong. I could be wrong, though. Ataraka World Render, Flying Trample, 6-4 for 7. Uh, whenever a dragon you control attacks against Double Strike until in turn. We actually do have one of these already, so this is a second copy of that. So that's almost unfortunate for me, but, you know, it's not, not so bad. Not so bad. I, I, I've got nothing to complain about. I didn't pay for any of this stuff. Just got handed to me. I'm looking like a big baby over here. Flame Rush Rider, five lands for a 3-3. Three, three. When Flame Rush Rider attacks, put a token. Oh, this is the, you gotta put a token that copy. that's a copy of another creature, attacking creature. And then you can also do its dash thing to put it in play uh, temporarily. And another Dromoka the Eternal, which I really like this one. Because it's five lands for a 5-5 five, five flying. That's ridiculous. I really like that one. Dragons I've seen so far. Three more packs! Ah! <laughs> what are we gonna get? We get a Flame Awake Phoenix. Have I seen this? Three lands for a 2 2 flying haste. It attacks each turn if able. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if you control a creature with power four or greater, you may pay one red. If you do, return Flame Wake Phoenix from your graveyard to the battlefield. Okay, so it's a 2 2 flying haste for three. I can return it for one red. If I have a, uh, a creature with power four or greater during my attack phase. So throw this in with your dragon deck where you're going to have creatures with power four or greater. And you can be getting him back pretty consistently. I feel like decks with phoenixes in the past typically don't have a lot of big creatures. Because you, you, you'll be running like burn spells. And, and this will be one of your small reliable creatures that you could keep bringing back. At least back when I, you know, back when I played Paper Magic. What do I know nowadays, huh? Wild Call. It's uh, two green and an X. Manifest the top card of your library, then put X11 counters on it. So manifest, you get to flip it down to two. Uh, face down is a two, two creature. Turn it face up at any time for its mana cost. And then it's gonna have those counters on top of it as well when you manifest it. That's pretty nifty. Okay, here we go, last one. This is the last booster pack here in our booster pack opening video. Extravaganza extraordinaire. So let's take it slow, take it nice and slow, get it done. I can't wait. To, I'm going to go through all these commons and uncommons at some point. But again, this video would have been like twice as long, if not more, had I done it here. So we did get a foil here, the Abzan Runemark foil. This is Palace Siege. It is a black card, five lands. Edge of the battlefield, you get to choose cons or dragons. If you choose cons at the beginning of your upkeep, Return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. I like that. And if you choose dragons at the beginning of your upkeep, each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. And that's not bad either. This black one, I like that versatility there. Not sure how we'll do in the meta, but I like that versatility. I like it a lot. So that is that. Let's go ahead and spread this out. Oh, yeah. I'm going to get a final shot here of all of our goodie bags. Uh, so this is... 
The culmination of everything that we've done so far, a whole bunch of magic cards in my pile of rares here. You got a bunch of lands back there. These are all the booster pack cards, and then these are my special decks that we got, the intro decks. Thank you so much to Wizards of the Coast for sending this stuff. It's ridiculous, to be honest with you. Uh, I'm sure that uh, this type of video is exactly what you wanted, but uh, actually I made it for you guys at home who are watching because I figured, again, if I'm going to get this stuff, I might as well like show you guys the cards because... Because magic is cool, and this is cool. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend the next couple of hours probably sitting here going through my cards. I think that's probably what I'm... There's a good chance that's what I'm going to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if I can... Maybe I'll make some decks, but who am I going to play against? My cats? They're not even in here. They're not even interested. My cat's saying, ah, man, I don't like magic. You're a nerd. <laughs> and then I went downstairs and I went to bed. They'd rather sleep than play magic. That's how uninterested they are. That makes me very sad. But thank you guys for being interested. I appreciate you watching this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, I am going to shut this off and play some magic with myself. Because I'm a nerd. That's fine. <laughs> See you guys later.